Welcome once again to another engaging episode on quantum computing. Today, we are taking a close look at the CNOT gate, a key piece in the puzzle of quantum computing. In classical computing, we have the NOT gate, which flips a bit from 0 to 1 or vice versa. But quantum computing is a different game. In quantum computing, we use the contour NOT or CNOT gate. This gate operates on two qubits. The first qubit is the contour qubit, and the second one is the target qubit. If the contour qubit is 0, then the target qubit remains unchanged. If the contour qubit is set to 1, the CNOT gate will flip the state of the target qubit. For example, if the contour qubit is set to 0, then on input 00, zero the output will be 00. zero. On input 0, 01, the output will be 0, 01. In this case, since the contour qubit is set to 1, the target qubit flips the state from 0 to 1. Again, contour qubit is 1, so the target qubit flips from 1 to 0. In quantum computing, the state of a compost system is represented by the tensor product of the state of its individual qubits. For instance, if you have a two qubit system where the first qubit is in the state 1 and the second one is in the state 1, we denote this as 1 tensor 1. But don't let the tensor product intimidate you, as it can be simplified. In common notation, we can represent it as 1 1 and we can omit the tensor notation, or even more simply as 1 1 in ket notation. Two qubits unlike some powerful potential in quantum computing. With just two of them, we are able to encode numbers from 0 up to 3, four different states. 1 1, a two qubit state in binary, which encodes the number 3 in our usual decimal system. We use this as our input for the quantum circuit. And what comes out on the other side? It's 1 0, another two qubit state. In our everyday decimal system, this translates to the number 2. Just like that, we have mapped 3 to 2. Let's shake things up with the Hadamard twist to our CNOT gate. But what happens when we apply a Hadamard gate on our control qubit? The Hadamard gate puts a control qubit into a superposition state, creating a balanced mixture of 0 and 1. The state of the system so far is the superposition of 0 and 1 on the control qubit tensor product with the 0 on the target qubit. After doing a multiplication, the state of the system is a superposition of 0, 0 and 1, 0. Now let's send it through the CNOT gate. We know that the CNOT of 0, 0 is 0, 0, CNOT of 0, 1 is 0, 1, CNOT of 1, 0 is 1, 1, and CNOT of 1, 1 is 1, 0. So the CNOT of 1 over square root of 2, 0, 0 plus 1, 0 is equal to 1 over square root of 2, CNOT of 0, 0 plus CNOT of 1, 0. But remember that quantum gates are linear transformation. But CNOT of 0, 0 is equal to 0, 0, and CNOT of 1, 0 is equal to 1, 1. So the final state is 1 over square root of 2, 0, 0 plus 1, 1. This combination results in a fascinating quantum behavior, entanglement. The set of our control and target qubits are now interconnected and cannot be separated. Even the great physicist Albert Einstein was confounded by this concept. He famously referred to entanglement as a spooky action at a distance, highlighted the mysterious and counterintuitive nature of quantum mechanics. Entanglement is key to quantum computing, boosting computational power exponentially. In the case of an entangled pair of qubits, you discover an interesting phenomenon that the chance of both qubits being in the state 0, 0 or 1, 1 is exactly 50% each. However, in the same scenario, the probability of finding them in the state 0, 1 or 1, 0 drops to 0, effectively making these states impossible. This counterintuitive outcome is part of the delightful mystery that makes quantum entanglement so captivating. Imagine adding another Hadamard gate into our quantum mix right after our CNOT gate. This adds another layer of complexity to our quantum circuit. What mysteries will this new addition unveil? Will it undo the entanglement? We have seen that the state of the system so far is superposition of 0, 0 and 1, 1. Now we apply Hadamard gate on the first qubit, which is a contour qubit. But Hadamard gate on 0 is 1 over square root of 2, 0 plus 1, and Hadamard gate on 1 is 1 over square root of 2. 0 minus 1.
after simplification, we have superposition of 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1, all with the same probability. The outcome is now a superposition of all possible outcomes. Yes, you heard it right. All possibilities are embraced at once. Instead of one definite state, we now have a dazzling array of potential outcomes. If we encode this to decimal representation, then we have a quantum function that maps 0 to the superposition of 0, 1, 2, and 3. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for updates. Leave any comments or questions below. See you in the next video.